Hi, good morning, Sabam. It's your hello, time. Sultan. Hello, Archie. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Shubham Agarwala from the Human Resource Department, and it is my great delight to welcome you all to Bajaj Auto's first virtual tour to CERN. CERN, or the European Council for Nuclear Research, is the biggest particle physics lab in the world and is located near the Franco-Swiss border in Geneva. Established in 1954, CERN is the birthplace of the World Wide Web, houses the Large Hadron Collider, and is the place where the Higgs boson particle was first discovered. Scientists and engineers at CERN probe the fundamental structure of the particles that make everything around us. In today's visit, we are going to have a closer look at the compact muon solenoid, or the CMS, CMS is one of the two general purpose detectors at CERN and was instrumental in the detection and discovery of the Higgs boson particle. To take us through CMS, we have a team of scientists and engineers joining us. I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, Ms. Archie Sharma. Archie is a postdoctorate researcher at RWTH Aachen, Germany, and has been a part of the CMS collaboration since 2007. Archie got a PhD from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and currently is working as a run coordinator for another muon detector, the drift tube. She's managing and coordinating the various commissioning activities and preparing the detector for the next year's collision. We also have with us Maria Toms. Uh, Maria is a doctoral student uh, and engineer at the National Research Center of the Institute for Theoretical and Experimental Physics in Moscow. She got her master's in uh, physics at the National Research Nuclear University. And currently she is working as a part of the CMS shifts organization and is uh, fulfilling several safety roles at the CMS experiment. We also have with us Zoltan and Noemi, both of whom have uh, PhDs in particle physics. For the last 20 years, Zoltan and Noemi have been working at the hardware muon barrel arrangement system and fiber optical sensing system at CMS. Apart uh, from their work, both Zoemi and uh, Zoltan have been making CERN more accessible to people like us all around the world by conducting such virtual visits since the very inception of the program. Maria, Archie, Noemi, Zoltan, I on behalf of the entire Bajaj Auto family welcome you and thank you for taking your time out and uh, giving us this tour of the CMS. Before we start, I would like to uh, mention to the entire audience that they can raise their questions in the Q&A tab and please use the, use the Q&A tab only, not the chat option. And uh, with that, Zoltan, I hand over the uh, session to you. Yes. Uh, OK, so um, uh, we are going to start uh, the tour in some time, right? Yeah. And uh, OK, so you thanks for this uh, introduction. and. Uh, um okay so uh, let me start uh, with the, the introduction of the compact neon solenoid yes. a little bit so um, as you have already explained uh, this is uh, a 27 kilometer tunnel so uh, lsc we refer to as the large hadron collider so basically we collide the the, the the hadrons, uh, which are here, the protons. So the two, two, two proton beams. They are um, uh, they they go through this uh, this tunnel, and then uh, there are four uh, experiments. Uh, the the one are uh, the two are the general purpose detectors, the CMS and the ATLAS. Um, okay, so we are working here in the CMS experiment, and then there are two others, the LSCB and the ALICE. Uh, they are for. Uh, mm, uh, Let me just show it this way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so LSCB and uh, the the ALICE, they are um, uh, uh, they are also the the the, the detectors, uh, but with some other purpose. And okay, so here you can see this is Atlas, this is CMS, and then um, LSCB is basically for the the B quark physics, and uh, Alice is basically the uh, deals with the physics with heavy ions. So here you they can see the screen, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So this is the you can see this uh, uh, the, the the tunnel the mach uh, the beam pipes uh, where uh, the, the these uh, protons uh, they uh, 
um, they travel and uh, uh, at four points where these experiments are located, the Atlas, CMS, Ellis, and LSCB, uh, the, at these four points, these proton beams collide. And then uh, there are the different detectors which, uh, uh, which uh, predict what, what is coming from, uh, uh, from, the, from the collision of these uh, protons. So let me just show a, a, an event. Okay. How it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So here you can see in the in the in the central uh, there is a uh, the, the the protons are colliding. Um, okay. Let me just add one other thing. They are at uh, very 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 high energy of the order of uh, tera electron volts, and uh, at uh, this high energy when they collide, um, the there are so many uh, the particles they are emitting. Uh, as you can see, there are the various tracks in the different colors which uh, which corresponds to the the different particles um, in uh, the in the end uh, in the red color uh, these are the muons which uh, are the least interacting uh, particle they can travel through the detectors and uh, in the end there are the muon detectors uh, you can see here in the red color where uh, they are detected uh, they are detected. So I am working on uh, one of these. Uh, there are three kind of uh, now there are four kind of muon detectors, and uh, uh, my work is basically on one of these uh, uh, th these uh, muon detector. Um, okay. okay. I think what we could we could ask from Maria and Noemi to look around in the control room. Okay. So we are we are on the surface now all the four. This is the control room of, of, uh, of CMS. Let me just add Maria's picture in. Yeah. Maria, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Great. So here we are in the control room. So when we take data, this room is full of different shifters who are responsible for different tasks um, uh, related to the data taking. And uh, now we are not taking any data. That's why we don't have any other people except us during the visit. Uh, many people who start working at CMS, they start exactly here uh, at this uh, technical shifter desk and uh, these shifters are responsible for um, monitoring the state of the detector, um, controlling the access to the underground sites, uh, the safety of people around CMS and so on. And now uh, we can probably go underground and show you the equipment and uh, our beautiful detector. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, we pass through several doors before we reach the underground areas. So here is the first point of access and yet you can see how the system works. I will show you how I, how I will access um, the service cavern area. So there is this iris scan that will check that it's really me who is trying to access and not somebody else. And uh, at the same time, the access system is checking that I have all the training courses and all the necessary accesses to be underground. And now we are entering the room which has the elevator, which will bring us down to the minus 100 meters underground where our detector is located. You can see this is the elevator. 
and you can see it's going up from the deep and when it we will arrive here it will be showing zero meters underground of course and uh, here you have some beautiful posters that are showing uh, the times when the detector was still being built you see that many people were working on this and in the uh, meantime we, we got a question yes uh, the for the iris scanner and the indeed the pad does it only scan for eyes is the question so uh indeed uh what you saw is is mainly the the iris scanner but this device is 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 more sophisticated it measures the weight and as well as the with with several uh photo gates it uh, it, it uh, tries to figure out how many people squeezed in it tries to to accept only one so now we are in the elevator we will go downstairs and uh we will lose connection at some point <laughs> yeah uh this is very interesting on the way down we lose connection on the way up we don't indeed we lost them uh so archie if you have anything to say uh okay so um, as uh, they are going downstairs to show you the detector uh, we um i'll just uh, can explain some uh, some uh, facts about our uh, our detector so um, it is very big so uh, the compact muon solenoid so why it is called compact muon solenoid so uh, you can see here the the, the, the weight of the detector is um, the total detector it is 14000 tons and uh, it has a um, overall diameter of 15 meter and a length of around 28.7 meter so um, the weight of our detector is twice as much as the F filter, but uh, it is uh, uh, the, the the volume of the detector is uh, like uh, very very small. I think it was uh, 400 times smaller than the F filter, so that is why uh, the first name of the the, the compact is uh, the C stand for compact. Then uh, the second uh, okay. Solenoids stand for the uh, for the magnet. So we have a very 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 strong uh, magnet in uh, of the uh, uh, our detector. So it is uh, the 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 magnet is around. It it produces the magnetic oh, okay. field. Okay. So they are there. Right. Yeah. Let me just stop stop the share. Uh, we got we got one one very interesting question concerning the the depth. Why is it one hundred meters down? Uh, is there anyone who wants to answer? Okay, you can. okay. <laughs> so indeed, uh, uh, a particle physics accelerator or a detector doesn't necessarily need to be built underground. It can be built on the surface if we just think of the the Stanford Linear Accelerator or, or the Fermilab Tevatron, they are both on the surface. There is some shielding uh, put on the top, but, but they are not deep underground. Uh, actually, the answer uh, is lying in the, in the lows. <laughs> so in, in order to, to make, in order to build the, the LHC on the surface, we would have needed to buy the whole Terran inside. If we look back, let me just just put back the share. And uh, if if we look back at the beginning, uh, you might see that there are lots of lots of inhabited lands in here. Several tens of thousands of people live inside the ring. If we would have needed to buy the full Terran, the the prices would have rocketed out. Uh, instead of that. Uh, uh, the European law allows to build underground without buying the the surface on the uh, the, the surface on the surface. Uh, that's why we can have metros 
in, in, in the, the big the cities as well. So uh, we went underground. And why 100 meters? That's a geological fact. Uh, we are we are uh, sitting in a in a molas area. Uh, if we look, well, you cannot look at here because the the picture was taken from the Jura mountain. The Jura mountain is is made of uh, limestone and molas, and uh, therefore these these geological layers contain a lot of water. Especially if you cross the geological layer border, you get enormous amount of water that would make the, the building very hard. So we had to stay in one uh, uh, layer that is stable enough and, and uh, good enough. And that's, that's laying 100 meter, approximately 100 meters below. Actually, this layer is not horizontal. This, uh, this uh, uh, goes down towards the lake, uh, but the terrain above rises much steeper so the the deepest point is not at the lake, mm -hmm. but the deepest point is somewhere here. Uh, if I'm not completely wrong, so somewhere here, sorry, at this point. This is the point four, where it is 140 meters below the surface. We are uh, 97 meters below the surface, uh, but uh, at the, the Alice it is only 70. So that's the answer for that, and sorry for, for, for stealing the, the voice. Let me just give back to the CMS mobile. Okay, here we are in the underground areas already. We just passed through the counting room. We will probably talk about it a bit later. And now we are near the entrance to the experimental cavern uh, where the detector itself is located. One interesting thing here, uh, we have the door that leads directly to the accelerator, to the LHC. Uh, we cannot enter there because this is interlocked. Whenever somebody tries to enter this door, the um, beam, if it were in the LHC tunnel, it will be dumped immediately. So usually we use the other entrance which is also interlocked, but now because we are in the long technical stop, this door is accessible. And there will be again the iris check and the access system check that uh, um, will allow me to go inside or not. So let's see. Interesting. <laughs> What's the problem? Maria? Yes. Okay, okay. okay that, 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 that's fine. That works. What's the what's the problem, Maria? Hello. Yes. So uh, indeed, I guessed right that the system will not uh, let me in. So Hi. we are thinking about uh, another solution. Uh, there is another entrance to the experimental cavern that we will try. And yeah. well, maybe what's works. the problem with the? What, uh, does it say any any? It doesn't no say message. anything. Um, hmm. It could be that I'm not in the impact. You but... are. That I know you are. Okay. <laughs> and the impact uh, is, is ongoing. So 
Okay, maybe I could take a token. Okay, then we will go up. Um, try at the at the the level minus three first. Uh, okay. In the meantime, let's let's answer some questions. So, uh, I, I started to type an answer for for a question: How many years did it take to build the entire collider wow. tunnel? Uh, well, indeed, we we inherited the the collider tunnel from the large electron positron collider that was uh, operating between uh, 1989 and 2000. We had to, however, we had to construct and excavate the experimental caverns for the Atlas and CMS. That took some, some three, four years, as far as I remember. What concerns the lab, when the lab was built, I think it took at least four years to, to make the tunnel. At that time, I was a secondary school <laughs> uh, child. Um, Acceleration of particle was in absolute vacuum or uh, or in any inert gas medium, vacuum, obviously yeah. vacuum. So if you want to to accelerate particles and you want to avoid the so-called uh, beam gas interaction, so that means that you create small experiments on the remanent gas uh, uh, particles, then you have to to make as big vacuum as as you can. Actually, our vacuum is somewhere around 10 to the minus 11 millibar. Uh, that's a bit better than on the that on the the invisible side of the moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have a big display of the underground area. Yes, of course. Let me just uh, let me just uh, show at least what concerns the the CMS part. I have a. Nice picture. So that's the place where Maria couldn't go through. So we have two big underground caverns. I, I let Archie to, to explain. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we have this. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, so this PM54 and uh, PM. Uh, this 56 these are the 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 the, uh, the lifts uh, we generally use this uh, pm54 uh, to go underground uh, this was the, uh, the 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 second floor where which holds all the electronics uh, uh, which is coming out from the detector um, downstairs then uh, this is the the underground part right if i'm uh, correctly looking mm -hmm. and uh, okay so probably when they will be just in front of the detector we can uh, better understand uh, this uh, uh, this picture and uh, uh, okay in the meantime uh, there is also uh, another questions about the the muon uh, is muon is a part of proton or the uh, resulting particle after collision of proton. Okay, so muon is not uh, a part of the proton, but when uh, the two proton beams uh, collide, they can, uh, they, 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 there are uh, various interactions going on and muon is one of the, the end product of uh, those interactions. Uh, so basically, it is the outcome of the collisions of the proton, but yes, it is not the part of the proton. Um, and uh, okay, so this is a uh, lepton, a very least interacting uh, particle, and it can travel through the uh, to the large distances. So in the end, uh, that is why in the end we have uh, placed the, the, the muon detectors and uh, where they are uh, detected. And uh, uh, also the, uh, the signals that, uh, that contains the muons and the, as an end product because they are uh, detected in the end. So 
the signals is very clean and uh, also the, uh, the 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 higgs where it is discovered in the channel it is one of the uh, this is called one of the golden channel because uh, it is one of the clear uh, clear signals with a very less background you can uh, uh, yeah so <clears throat> okay so in the meantime uh, i can see another experiment uh, okay why was the discovery of Higgs boson such an important event? Okay, so the Higgs boson, um, uh, let me just uh, uh, try to explain in the layman language that the Higgs boson was discovered in uh, 1960, uh, not discovered, it was, in, uh, it was given in the theory in uh, 1964 by, by the two theorists, one was Peter Higgs and uh, the other was Englert, and uh, uh, so the basically this uh, this particle, the Higgs boson, it uh, it explains why the different particles they 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 get the uh, they get the mass and uh, uh, why some why the different particles have different masses. So basically, Higgs boson is a field, and when the particles interact. Uh, through this uh, field, they, they will get the mass. How much uh, heavier is the particle? How much lighter is the particle? It depends on the how much interactions. If they are, uh, if the interaction is strong, they, they are uh, much heavier. If they are, it is light, it is lighter. So this was the basic uh, concept which was given by these two uh, two uh, theorists. They were particle. They were also particle physicists. And then um, after this, uh, uh, okay, it was given in the theory, but there was no experimental. Uh, and uh, then this part, uh, this uh, 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 the Large Hadron Collider. It the basic purpose of this was to to to, to prove the the existence of this uh, Higgs bosons and. Uh, um, okay, so as this was the main uh, main uh, main goal of this uh, uh, this uh, whole uh, idea of this experiment was this uh, uh, Higgs boson. So that is why uh, we were focused mainly on uh, on this uh, particle. And it was uh, finally it was discovered in 2012, and uh, uh, where the discovery of Higgs bosons was announced, and then. Uh, also in 2013, uh, uh, the, on the discovery, it, the Nobel Prize was given. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so jump detectors. <laughs> Can you explain how that jump detectors increase the ability of detect neurons? Uh, that's, uh, sorry for taking the voice. No, no, I'm no, okay. <laughs> working for the jump as well. So. Um, the gem detectors are closer to the beam pipe. Uh, they are installed in the forward region. So it means that uh, uh, maybe not a, we can yeah, show may, maybe the, I can show the, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. So if, when we are talking about the gem detectors, gem detectors are installed in the forward region, not in the barrel one of the detector. And they are, at a point where they are closer to the beam pipe than the other muon end cap muon detectors. I mean, in, in, uh, in pseudo rapidity in the theta angle, they are closer to the beam pipe. So it means that they can, we can get closer to the, to the beam direction in the muon detections. And that's, that's very important because uh, in the future more and more it becomes more and more important to see the boosted particles as well. So that's that's why we have to install the jump detector. There is another. Uh, How much data? Uh, no, no, actually, I wanted to answer the got particle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> so this is this is a misunderstanding indeed. Yeah. So when when uh, when uh, there was a <laughs> there was an interview with Hicks at the very beginning. He called this particle goddamn particle. 
just because it is a very it, it is a very strange way how this particle interacts with the other particles uh, it has uh, different properties than the others so he called it got them but of course in the, the paper this phrase couldn't be typed so so the 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 journalist just used the god particle and somehow it, it sticked on it but even hicks uh, 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 denies it <laughs> okay uh, how many collisions happen in the lhc per second 40 million <laughs> Yes, but we don't uh, take all those uh, collisions because uh, it needs a lot of space to store and all of them are not interesting. So we have uh, uh, a different triggers. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in simple language, we can call them as a filters. So we, uh, uh, we filter those, uh, those events and uh, we, we keep only uh, those which are... Uh, which are interesting for us, which are interesting from the physics point of view, and all the others are uh, they are uh, discarded. Yeah. So, so just just to tell you that what is interesting and non-interesting, in most of the cases the the particles just bounce off from each other. So even if these are the the gluons in the protons and the protons will will explode, these are just uh, elastic collisions. These we already know very well, so we don't need them. But if something happens, particle to energy, energy to particle transmutation, that's what we are interested in. That's why uh, we talked about the muons so far. The muons are not part of the protons. Yeah, in, no. the, in the <laughs> protons, there are so many part other particles exist, quarks, gluons, but not the muons. So if you see a muon at the, the final stage, I mean in the detector, you might imagine that something interesting happened this is one of the one of these trigger filters that 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 archie just just uh, explained we have uh, uh, quite a few of them but this is the easiest to, to explain if if the system sees muon tracks it uh, instructs the detector readout to read out all the 120 million channels <laughs> and send up the the information above us uh, to the computer farm where we have something like 15,000 CPUs and they have enormous time, something like one millisecond <laughs> to make the decision. So actually we, we, uh, we have 40 million bunch crossings per second. We have something like 100,000 where we see something, a muon path or, or energy imbalance or whatever. And Finally, only 1,000 in an average survives the computer farm as well. And this is what we pump out from the, the experiment for storage and for, for physics analysis. Uh, the main storage is with, uh, at its sun. And, uh, uh, but apart from that, there are uh, mm, all over the world, there are the, the resources, the computers, which uh, which store uh, this uh, this data and uh, uh, this is all uh, connected to to the grid mm -hmm. okay what what speed practically speed of speed of light 0 0.69s Mm -hmm. something very close to the speed of light. How is the vacuum created in the tube? Yeah, yeah. so I think it is a... Sorry? How is the vacuum created in the tube? Well, very, <laughs> very, very high performance uh, vacuum uh, 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 pumps. We use mainly for the for pumping down we use turbo molecular vacuum pumps and for maintaining the very high uh, vacuum we have ion getters yeah. okay so does this setup pose a safety hazard to the surroundings no uh, maria what is happening now 
Uh, now we are going back to minus three yeah. uh, with a token. We couldn't access through minus one, uh, minus two, uh, because the key for the bypass was not working. Okay, okay, that's that we have to to report the access systems. Okay. All right. In the meantime, we try to answer the questions, so don't worry. <laughs> um, collision tube made of so the the tube of the lhc is made of uh, several different materials stainless steel aluminium but at the at the collision points we have to we have to have a material that keeps the vacuum but in the meantime has the minimal uh, uh, interference with the with the out flying particles. Of, of course, we don't want to bias our uh, measurements. And the best uh, uh, material for this is beryllium. So plus and minus, I think one and a half meters of the, the central beam pipe inside the detector is made of pure beryllium. Okay, so one question I'm seeing here, what is the remaining lifetime of this facility? I suppose they are talking about the detectors. So I think it is uh, supposed to run until 2040 or 2038. Uh, well, well, it is always pushing out. <laughs> so when I started my career, this was something like 2020. Ah, uh, right. now, it is, uh, now it is 2035. Uh, but we are talking about the extension to 2040. It depends uh, on on several different uh, 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 things, options. So if we find something in physics that can be explored with the present architecture, then we have to we have to do this. Then we have to collect data for that. Uh, of course, within reason. So all these particle detectors are are subject to radiation yeah. that might destroy them. So, so we have to find the, the correct balance between the, the physics and the particle detector lifetime. Uh, of course, we, we can renew it by time and that's what we are doing. So, so the detector is not 20 years old now. We have parts that are extremely young, for example, the gems, if we are talking about, yes. so the, we can, we can, uh, uh, make the detector running until uh... Uh, so so it, un, until it is feasible that's the so finally we are we are talking about the fcc the future circular collider if uh, if it is feasible to run our detect our system up to the turning on of the fcc that's the that's the ultimate feasibility all right, then, then we, are, we are finally in. So I would give back the voice to Maria. All right, great. So we finally managed to get in. And now we are on the floor level uh, of, the, the, uh, of the experimental cavern. So we are at minus 97 meters underground. And you can see the detector here. So, You can see it's quite big and it's beautiful. When it's uh, in its operational state, it's uh, about 21 meters long and uh, it's 15 meters high. Uh, now you can see that uh, the wheels uh, that the detectors build off, they are now uh, moved away from each other. This is done to allow the different works which we are doing during this long shutdown period. And you see, for example, this uh, 20 ton platform is installed to allow the works on the innermost part of the detector, which is tracker uh, and uh, also the pixel detector. Do you have any specific questions? about the part that we can see here. Yeah, I just saw one. Uh, let me just uh, try to... So there was a question about how many 
uh, detector parts in the in the detector. If you uh, count only the big parts, it's uh, 15. So mm -hmm. if I can show you, I can see, I can show you the width of one of the parts. So here you see the beginning, the beginning of this part. And here you see the end. So you see this hole between the two red parts. Uh, this is, is two and just, a half meters. Yes, so you can see better here. On the left, there is a width of one of those parts. So here is the next one. And there are 15 parts like this. And we call them wheels or disks. And Actually, we, we go, have to, oh yeah, sorry, go yes. ahead. If we go further, we can see another opening between the barrel and the end cap part. And there is again uh, the 20 ton platform, which allows works on the uh, pixel detector. But this is not there when we are running, <laughs> obviously. Yes, yes, <laughs> obviously. Uh, when uh, we are running, we remove all the uh, gaps between the different disks and we move the wheels close to one another and then it's indeed 21 meters long in this compact form um, but now of course uh, it takes all the length of the experimental cavern which is about uh, uh, 50 or 60 meters and another interesting thing that we can show you uh, is um, pit, the shaft, which was used to uh, lower down the big parts of the detector in the, into the experimental cavern. So you see there uh, the hole and uh, it goes uh, all the way up 100 meters to the surface. So this hole, uh, we call it shaft, it was used to lower down all these big 15 parts of the detector. Um, one interesting thing also is that uh, the size of the pit, the size of this hole is just slightly bigger than the uh, biggest dimension of the detector wheel. There, is, there was about 10, 15 centimeters on each side between the wall of the shaft and the uh edges of the discs so it was a very delicate operation and even if it was just 100 meters it took about 12 hours to lower down the biggest part uh, of this uh, 15 discs and uh, uh, as you can imagine all this uh, big parts of the detectors, they are very heavy. It's a few thousand tons and uh, you cannot use uh, the ordinary equipment for that. You can see there we have uh, this uh, yellow uh, crane. It, it is able to hold up to about uh, 20 tons. But as I mentioned, the detector parts were a few thousand tons. So we used a very special crane uh, that arrived here just for this job. And after that, it left to the South Africa to lift the roof over the stadium for the World Cup uh, 2010, 2010. Uh, so as you can see, we, uh, we need to use very special techniques while building uh, these uh, big machines called detectors. May oh. I have, may I interrupt yes. you? We got a qu couple of questions concerning safety, yeah. uh, uh, concerning whether we can be around the detector during running or, or what are the safety concerns or, or the detector poses any safety concerns to the environment. So uh, first of all, we cannot be there in the, the experimental cavern when we are running the experiment. The top of this this uh, vertical shaft, what uh, Maria just showed you, we can we can cover with a very thick uh, 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 concrete slab. 
So that can be completely sealed off. The other part of the so-called positive end, we also can seal off. So this detector can be in a completely sealed room. Um, we cannot access there when we are running the experiment. Uh, but I mean, when we are having the, Collision. the collisions, and this is due to the radiation uh, uh, background. Well, indeed, it is. It is uh, in most of the, uh, the 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 surroundings. It is not extremely high. We are not in a in a particle in in a nuclear power plant, but this is already enough to be above the safety level that has been set up by the laws. So we have to obey them, and and that's why we cannot be there. And of course, there are parts. Uh, Around the detector, and especially in the uh, in the the accelerator tunnel, where the the radiation level is pretty high. Uh, however, once we turn the detector off, I mean the, the the particle beam off, in a couple of seconds, this radiation level drops to the tolerable uh, level. We also change the the air in the 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 experimental cavern uh, very quickly, and also uh, the most of the, the induced radiation just goes away. So we can very quickly go in, I mean, in a couple of minutes or half an hour after the, the particle beam is turned off. Now, at this moment, we didn't see in the beam for more than two years. So the, the background level is extremely low. Yeah, still we have a lot of uh, safety uh, measurements that we take whenever we go underground, even uh, if we know that uh, the radiation level is not high or not, uh, it is within the limits. Mm -hmm. Also, I was uh, uh, in during the last run, I uh, I was uh, I was taking shifts, but on the surface I never went uh, downstairs. But I I heard that if uh, you have to go downstairs since the magnetic field is on and uh, it is quite high, so you have to remove all the metallic uh, things. Yes, and uh... that's extremely <laughs> true. So so once the magnet is up. We can still go down to the to the experimental cavern, provided there is no beam. The most of the most of the the magnetic field is is encapsulated inside the magnet. So Maria can show where the magnet is, and uh, yes, exactly. So inside the magnet volume, we have 3.8 tesla. Outside, it is much much less, but it is still enough to make some. Um, make your life uncomfortable <laughs> if you have uh, magnetizable tools or even your safety shoes are magneti magnetizable. Or if uh, you have uh, coins by chance in your pocket. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but if you if you know what you can expect, you can go down even with a with a wrench and you can demonstrate the magnetic field lines. We, we used to do it mm -hmm. on those very, very few visits when we could still go down but the magnet was on. Uh, well, this is really a, a wrestling machine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to turn the 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 uh, the wrench out from the, the the field lines, that's very interesting. Yeah. So indeed, we don't don't pose any safety concerns on the 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 surroundings, especially because we have very strict safety rules. We prevent the people to go in. And also, whatever comes out from the detector, I mean, cooling water, air, what, everything that we measure. And we, we can guarantee that we do not eject anything into the nature that is harmful. That's very important. Uh, the laws uh, uh, require this, and the authorities would, would uh, shut, shut our shut our equipment off immediately if we would not behave. What kind of um, radiation is possible? We get uh, gamma and, and neutron. OK, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to interrupt you while we are here. And I can show you the jam detectors, which were, you were talking about just before. Um, so if I try, OK, so they are located between between my two fingers here. So all the way um, around 
the nose of the detector, uh, we have these new jam detectors installed. Uh, if you want to explain something specific while we are here, go ahead. Otherwise, so I will. I, I would like you to show. I would like to show you the detector from the top. Yeah. So actually, what I just want to add to the gems, at this level, at this long shutdown where we are, we install gem detectors in front of muon detectors, the innermost ones, uh, because this can this can make the performance be better. However, in the next step, when we are going to change the complete nose, uh, we are going to get closer to the beam pipe. So then the gem steps to a to a completely new era when it will it will become its own detector, a, a standalone detector. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we will go to the top of the detector. You can answer next questions while we are getting there. Yeah. Why do we need such power for magnets, Archie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as uh, okay. So when the two protons, um, two protons beam collide, there are uh, several uh, several different type of uh, particles. They are uh, uh, they are emerged or they are uh, uh, okay from these collisions. So every particle has a different. Uh, different nature and what are the real challenges here for us at the detector how to differentiate them and how they can be done if uh, the particle is uh, bent and this bending is done with this magnetic field so why the magnetic field is important it is important to 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 bend these particles and that's why uh, we have this uh, uh, this high magnetic uh, this high magnet if there is no bending uh, we cannot uh, expect anything we the particles will be there but we we, we cannot detect them so this is uh, the reason i i also got another very important and uh, interesting questions what is the real life benefit of these experiments mm -hmm. Okay, so I think this is one of the most uh, common uh, questions that uh, we heard a lot of time that uh, what is the use of the detector to the to the common man. So apart from uh, uh, understanding the, the, the existence of the universe, how the universe was uh, created in the during the time of the big bang uh, which is also one of the uh, uh, the the, the mo uh, one of the purpose of these experiment and then from the higgs uh, discovery uh, the discovery of the higgs boson uh, which okay so from uh, the common uh, common man point of view uh, there are many technologies which are uh, developed the, uh, during these experiments, which are uh, very helpful uh, apart from the physics point of view. For example, we have uh, also um, uh, uh, the, the, in the medical physics. We, uh, so um, in the cancer therapies, in the 3D X-ray images, all these techniques which are uh, coming from uh, from the sun and uh, they are going to help uh, the, uh, uh, the the one of the basic example is uh, this uh, www the World Wide Web. Uh, if you know, this is also discovered in the uh, at sun. So the the purpose was to uh, it. It was uh, developed on the purpose of this uh, the particle physics, but uh, the use is now uh, everywhere. So uh, there are many other things that we are doing. The technology. There are so many R and Ds which are going on, which are helping the industries and uh, uh, all this stuff. So. Yeah, so apart from the physics, from the Higgs boson, from the Big Bang, there are so many things which are also helping uh, the, uh, the, in the real life also, the, the technologies that we are, uh, we are developing, we are working on them. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, does Higgs boson exist in the normal everyday condition? So uh, okay, so Higgs boson, as I, I as I said, it is a it is a particle which is responsible. It is not actually it is a field which is responsible for giving the masses to the different particles. So yes, uh, you, you cannot see it, you cannot feel it, but yes, it exists. Uh, Okay, so... so what are the major future objectives of CERN after Higgs boson? <laughs> we, we got this question in a, in a different form above as well. So what I used to say that, uh, that uh, the LHC and especially its detectors resemble very much on the Santa Maria of Christopher Colombo. Um, so there was a project then to, to go to India <laughs> uh, westward. Uh, this was the hypothesis that this can be done. Uh, well, in his case, he didn't reach India, but he discovered something equally interesting. Uh, in our case, we already reached India, I mean, discovered the Higgs boson. But of course, uh, our, our ship sails continue sailing. And actually, uh, we, might, uh, we might get something unexpected as well. We hope that we will find some, some physical uh, processes that uh, reach out from the from the so-called standard model, and actually, we had a we had a publication two weeks ago, which the first uh, which gives the first uh, uh, handle on this. This is very important. We know that the the standard model is not the ultimate uh, uh, um, model that we have on physics. Uh, and we and we would like to discover the ways towards the the next step, the next model. Well, there was a question concerning how much power is required. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this I know. Okay, I don't know. This. <laughs> so the 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 full CERN uses something like uh, 170, 180 megawatts if everything is on, including the accelerators, the, the detectors, and my computer and my desk lab as well. Uh, this is not a very, very high amount. This is something uh, that a, a, a mid-city, a mid-sized city here in, in the region uh, uh, consumes, something like 200,000 inhabitants. Uh, so therefore, CERN is not a, a very big consumer. <laughs> <laughs> Does the Higgs boson exist in normal everyday conditions? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's an everyday condition that we are doing indeed. <laughs> yes, so Let's now see. we are uh, in the middle, uh, more or less, of the detector. Uh, I mean, in terms of height. And uh, here's where the beam pipe is passing through the detector. Actually, you can see it now. It was reinstalled just recently. Uh, in the beginning of long shutdown, we removed uh, the beam pipe because it was very fragile and we didn't want to damage it. And uh, now we actually got a new one. So there is still work on going to uh, complete all the measurements and all the preparations before we can manage to take data with it. Mm. Uh, and concerning, oh yeah, go ahead. Yes. I also wanted to show you that we have a lot of equipment that's not detector, but it's uh, closely related to it. We have so-called racks with equipment. Uh, we have it, uh, them both in the experimental cavern and in the service cavern. So, of course, those racks, which are here in the experimental cavern, they are not accessible when the detector is running. So here we have a very, um, uh, the equipment that will withstand the radiation, uh, the magnetic field that we have here. And it should be very reliable because getting here to fix anything is, um, is a hard operation to do. 
uh, it requires a lot of uh, negotiation with the LHC and so on. Uh, however, uh, a lot of equipment is stored in the service cavern because it's always accessible, even when there is a beam right here. And there we can uh, adjust uh, and uh, fix the things on the go. Yeah, that was my comment. Uh, in the meantime, we also got a very interesting question uh, concerning the, the precision that is required to collide the protons. So, you know, the protons are extremely small, something like uh, 10 to the minus 15 meters, one Fermi. Um, if you want to collide them, they should, well, if we regard them as, as uh, billiard balls, uh, you can imagine that we should uh, bring them somehow very had to, uh, to, to, to make a head-on collision. Um, indeed, the proton bunches that, that, that cross each other inside the detector contain 10 to the 11 to 100 billion protons each. Uh, they need to be squeezed very much, something like to, 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 to my, my hair size, uh, hair the diameter, in order to be able to, to make collisions. Uh, and also then we have to direct them to each other uh, with, with special magnets. Uh, indeed, the task is not very complicated. It is something like shooting through an eye of a needle when the needle is on the moon. <laughs> I, had a, yeah. I have a comment to that. So if you remember that there are 10 to 11 protons in each uh, bunch, uh, in fact, we need, we need to be very precise to collide to protons because out of this 10 to 11, uh, only about 50 of them actually see each other, sort of collide with each other. Others just pass through. Uh, 100 meters down, what is the effect of earthquakes on the entire infrastructure? We had to design it to the, uh, to the maximum uh, uh, earthquake level, Richter scale five, that happens every 1,000 years in this region. So, so all these devices can survive, or at least designed to survive up to then. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> Yeah, there is another, I think, is there any residual magnetic field? Yeah, I think, I think, you know. I think we have a toy for that. <laughs> oh, Amy? <clears throat> and I think the most important question goes to Archie. How can students from India join CERN? Ah, so there are, uh, um, uh, let me just say you now, the, uh, India is now the associate member of CERN. So it was not like this uh, uh, during the time when I joined uh, the PhD. But um, still, I mean, uh, the, uh, when I was there, there were four, uh, four or five. Uh, uh, so there were Delhi University and Punjab University, which was part of this collaboration. And uh, then there was uh, TFR and uh, BARC. Uh, yes, if I not remember. But uh, that was the time uh, like 10 or uh, 15 years back. But now um, we have a lot of institutions which are... Uh, we, which are the part of this collaborations and... Uh, due to this, uh, since now we are the associate members. So uh, we have this opportunity that uh, during the time, even in the IITs, uh, when you have to do this, uh, this project, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you can, uh, there are the various projects that you can also take at uh, CERN. So um, you have to go, through these institutes, there are the guides which uh, which can offer you this uh, six months of internship um, in the engineering field, in the physics field, and also in from the computer science. 
and of course after that uh, the, 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 there are a lot of chances if you have if you want to do the phds uh, you can do it from any institutes which are the part of this collaboration in india and then uh, also you can apply in the foreign institutes also for the for the phd or uh, anything but uh, yes apart from that the sun offers a lot of a uh, lot of internship a lot of uh, small projects that uh, uh probably the the any um uh, how to say the the graduate student the college going student or the engineer or the computer scientist they can they can opt for it now there are a lot of there are various uh, or uh, i would say there are many 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 opportunities for the students if if they want to work here with the sun and uh, let me say you that it is a it is a very good ex, ex, uh, experience uh, to work in such a collaborations and uh, if yeah if someone in, is interested uh, he or she must try it let me interrupt so we just uh, exited from the experimental cavern and got back to the service cavern. And you can see here the racks, which I was talking about. So these are all accessible even during the proton collisions period. And uh, here we have a lot of power supplies, mostly high voltage ones, uh, and many other electronics, including the trigger system, which is part of the data acquisition system. And uh, I believe Zoltan and Archie told you about it before. So here is how just part of the system looks like. And uh, this is the uh, electronics part that uh, uh, selects only the interesting events from all the collisions that we have uh, during the uh, proton collisions. And of course, it's only a part of the system. Uh, it's called the level one, which selects uh, the first uh, sort of stream of events. And then we have <coughs> HOT farms um, upstairs, not underground anymore, that are using uh, complex algorithms to understand which kind of events are happening and uh, which of them uh, are really interesting and then it selects them and uh, puts into different streams the ones which contain muons uh, the ones which contain uh, jets and so on but this is really the first part and it's uh, here underground because it has to be close to the detector to improve the timing so we need to select the events very very fast and that's part of the reason why it's here underground and not upstairs. Exactly. How do you detect and study a muon if it has a lifetime of only two microseconds? Well, the special relativity of Albert Einstein. Yeah, and also the magnetic field which uh, which bend these muons. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't have Im impact on the lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but indeed, so 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 that's the that's the answer from from a standing frame, a, uh, a stationary frame. The lifetime of the muon that is moving at almost a speed of light is is quite long. So actually, that's how you can. Uh, detect muons down on the surface of the the earth here why they are created somewhere the, at 10 kilometers uh, high yeah are those experiments also done in space with actual astral body collisions ah we have this uh, ams right the, uh, sorry 
So the question is, are these experiments also done in space with actual yeah. astral body collisions? Yeah, that's that's the that's the the AMS in yeah. on, on the so there is an experiment uh, AMS which is uh, in uh, collaboration with NASA, I think. Mm, well, uh, I don't know exactly, <laughs> but this is this is sitting on on one of the arm of yeah, the International, on the Space, International Space, Station. Space Stations, and uh, yeah, so this is also one of the many experiments which are happening inside Sun and. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, much about this, but uh, yes, I, I I know that uh, the people they are working on this, they have, um, yeah, so this is uh, also one of the very um, yeah, exactly. interesting. Exactly. Uh. Yeah, so this uh, about the fellowships. So uh, I there are some uh, fellowship programs at uh, at CERN um, at the various levels. Uh, also on in every field in the electronics, also in the computers, also. So you just have to um, uh, take a look at the CERN uh, CERN websites, and if. Uh, if you are eligible, if you are interesting, if the, the, the work is according to your interest, so you can uh, you can apply to this uh, these uh, fellow programs. Okay. Uh, how much data does the LAC generate, and how do you store process it? Well, uh, uh, I think it's somewhere on the the petabyte. Uh, level that we are creating per year, and actually we stored them on 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 uh, magnetic tapes. And the reason why magnetic tape is good enough comes from the fact that we have uh, um, events that are statistically uh, or, or that are completely independent from each other. So if we want to make a physics analysis, we have to check them one by one, all of them. That means a sequential access, like what the tape can can provide, is good enough for us. Even though we we copy out the <laughs> the the data, so technically this is much more complicated. But uh, we can we have to go sequentially one by one. What we can do, since again, since the events are not related to each other, we can. Uh, partitionate them to, to smaller chunks and run them parallelly on the on the grid uh, that that was developed for the for for chewing the the data of the LHC actually we have much more data I think in in the um, in Monte Carlo <laughs> simulations yeah this is what I was uh, about to tell that uh, apart from this uh, real data the data that we got from the collisions we also have this uh, the the data from the uh, the simulations which we call the Monte Carlo simulations so we we generate the data and then uh, uh, we predict that uh, if this happened, what could be the outcome? And then when the real data comes, we compare the two results, two, ki uh, two kind of uh, uh, things that we got from the simulations and then we got from the real data. And that's why we, 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 we predict the precision of our, uh, our results. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we also got a question about the speed of light. Can we cross the speed of light? No. no. Uh, <laughs> so that's the answer is very simple. We cannot do this. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, our our team has just arrived. I don't think I will remove them from the spotlight. And of course, we lost them when they, they moved. Mm -hmm. um, Sabam, do you have any anything to add? Uh, no, Zoltan. Uh... Most of the questions that we had have already been asked. So there's no more question pending from our end. OK. Uh, so who funds all these operations? 
Oh, it's so interesting. Uh, well, <laughs> indeed, uh, I think uh, so. We have to make difference between CERN and the experiments. CERN is founded by the CERN member states. Now we have 27, if I'm not completely wrong. Uh, the annual budget of CERN is somewhere around 1 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, spent on the infrastructure and the accelerators and maintaining and running and developing them. Concerning the detectors, the detectors are, are built, maintained, uh, uh, upgraded by the institutes that that uh, 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 participate in the, the experiment, the given experiment project. At CMS, we have something like 150 institutes uh, in, including Indian institutes as well. So your question, uh, the answer on your question is you. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> How much money our government is paying to CERN? Uh, it depends. It depends <laughs> on the the individual agreements. Not yeah. every country pays the same. Uh, and also that's the how, status, no? Sorry. Also the status. Uh, that... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It depends on 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 how much money uh, a state can provide. Yeah. Uh, it it differs very much, but we don't differentiate between groups on this basis. That's a very important thing. India is involved in uh, two experiments. The one is, of course, the CMS, and the other is the uh, Alice. So we we have we are involved in these two experiments from India. Mm -hmm. In particle physics, uh, well, particle uh, shows wave nature or particle nature, which is more predominant? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we often like to to regard our particles inside the accelerator as billiard balls so particles and this is due to the fact that they are they, they are having a large amount of energy however on uh, close to the beam direction the diffractive physics is also non-negligible so the wave behavior becomes more and more important so what i would say that we are humans. We we try to make our assumptions based on the 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 uh, the macro world uh, objects, but of course this is completely different. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, raised. Okay. So most of the questions I think we already. The answered. Yeah, so I'm just seeing this question. Interesting collision is decided based on the outcome of the result. So as I understand is everything is recorded, but only interesting. Okay, so we can, as I, as John Fendel, that there are 40 million, right? Mm -hmm. 40 million um, events that produced per second uh, when there is a collision. So of course we cannot uh, record all of them. So uh, there are uh, triggers, as we said, the, the first are the online triggers that Maria just shows, which are close to the underground. And then there are the HLT, the, the software-based triggers. So uh, we cannot record everything. We, we just keep the, only the interesting events. And then uh, how these interesting events are uh, choose, they are on the base of these Monte Carlo simulations. And then after we analyze this data, even after uh, keeping only the interesting events, there are a lot of lot of backgrounds which are there in uh, in that data, and you have to remove them, and you have to uh, you have to see what what, what are the the, the 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 actual outcome that you wanted to see from from those data. And okay, so yes, the question is that we we cannot record everything. Uh, okay. So I think if there is no more questions remained, then uh, Sabam, uh, do you have anything more? Or no, should Zoltan. we go wrap up? Sultan, I think uh, we can wrap up. The... Okay. So Zoltan so... uh, and Archie, thank you very much for patiently <laughs> answering all our questions and, you know, answering all our 
good questions and our stupid questions too. <laughs> there are and, no stupid uh, questions. This is something we have to to insist. All questions should be taken seriously because you can never know what inspiration you might get. No stupid questions at all. <laughs> and also, thank you, Noemi and uh, Maria, for actually going out and showing us the entire facility. It's fascinating and amazing to see uh, the kind of work that is happening and the way you are uh, changing physics as we know it. So thank you. Uh, thank you all for taking your time out and giving us this tour. Thank you very much for, you. for being with us today. And I hope that we can get together again. And also Definitely. Physical, not just virtually. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.